Wow, look at that. It's so complicated up there. Over the last week, all the biggest players in the space tech community gathered in Bremen, Germany to share and discuss the latest innovations in the industry and market their cutting-edge products. Over 400 companies throughout Europe were represented, including the big names like Airbus, Ariane Space, and DLR, which is the German Space Agency. However, what makes the Space Tech Expo in Europe so interesting is all of the little companies that are represented at the fair, like small satellite launchers, satellite manufacturers, custom part suppliers, and even university groups like Astra. Lukashevich is an institute in Poland that works on a lot of space and propulsion related projects. The rocket on display here is called the ILR-33 Amber 2K. It is a vehicle that is intended to reach the Kármán line. Similar to the rocket at Astra, it is powered by a hybrid main stage but will be using a hydrogen peroxide as an oxidizer instead of nitrous oxide. It also has two small solid rocket boosters that are radially staged in order to boost the vehicle during takeoff. It has only completed a few demo flights over the past four years to a maximum altitude of 23 kilometers, but is hoping for a full-scale launch within the next two years. Airbus is one of the major players in the aerospace world in Europe. They are currently developing lunar landing capabilities with its European Large Logistic Lander. It will be capable of putting 1.7 tons of payload anywhere on the lunar surface. Also on display here is the European Service Module which is Airbus's contribution to the Orion capsule. This compartment provides propulsion, power, water, air, navigation, and temperature regulation. When unfurled, the solar panels will be nearly the length of a tennis court across. One local company here in Bremen is OHB. They are a satellite manufacturer that has been in business for the past 40 years. Some of the recent projects which are on display include the Galileo constellation, which provide navigation services similar to GPS. Also, Meteosat, which is a weather forecasting satellite, and Nmap, which is an Earth observation satellite tailored towards the visible and infrared wavelengths to monitor the biosphere. Up front and center at the Space Tech Expo is the Ariane Group. This is a joint venture company between the two giants of the aerospace world in Europe, Airbus and Safran. This mainly includes the UK, France, Germany, and Spain, where these two companies operate. Ariane Group is responsible for the Ariane 5 vehicle, which has been the main workhorse launcher for the European community for the past 25 years. One of the unique selling points of the Ariane 5 is its ability to hoist two payloads to a geostationary transfer orbit in one mission. This is a typical destination that satellites today are often going. This allows them to charge half price to each customer on board, making them a very competitive company. Within the next year or two, we expect the new Ariane 6 vehicle to be upcoming. This is a vehicle that was designed to help cut the cost of access to space and hopefully compete with some new vehicles like this SpaceX Falcon 9. ZARM is a local institution to Bremen that is dedicated to space-related testing. Their trademark item is the ZARM drop tower in which it is possible to simulate the zero-g environment of outer space for a few seconds. This tower is about 120 meters tall and is able to simulate the zero-g environment of space by dropping items inside a vacuum tube which extends the length of the tower. It is also one of the quintessential buildings in the Bremen skyline. The Space Tech Expo is not just limited to companies that originate in Europe. One small satellite launcher called Agnicool originates from India. Apologies if I'm murdering that Hindi name. They are developing a modular rocket which can be tailored to the size of any payload mass. This has the potential to save millions to launch satellites that may not fit neatly into the mass and volume capabilities of existing launchers. Furthermore, they are also pushing the capabilities of 3D printing technology by fully 3D printing their rocket engines. There are countless other companies that are on display at the Space Tech Expo Europe. There's Dawn Aerospace, which is attempting a low-cost, Carmen Line-style vehicle. D-Orbit, which is trying to make a business out of removing space debris. Skyrora, which is a satellite launcher operating out of the UK. Space Structures, which is dedicated to structural elements of launchers and other space-related equipment. And many, many other companies, all devoted to 
space-related technologies. It would truly take the entire week of the expo, even just to briefly explore each one of these companies. It is the small efforts that all these little companies are individually taking that is going to push the boundaries of the aerospace industry into the future. Here at Astra, we hope that we do our part to enrich the tapestry of knowledge in the aerospace community. We look forward to working with some of these companies in the future in order to accomplish our goals and ultimately to make humanity a spacefaring civilization. For regular updates on Astra's progress towards reaching the Kármán line, be sure to subscribe to our channel. In addition, we recommend that you check out some of the groups that were featured in this video. There's lots of cool engineering that's happening there. And remember to keep expanding your horizons.